hand it over to you. Okay. So Linda is our title reader tonight, Linda Stuber. Thank you, Thank Linda. You, Linda. You betcha. And our judge is Jane, Jane Posillion, who has judged for us every year that I've been in the club. <laughs> <laughs> this is like six times, I guess. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> Thank you, Jane. Your your club is so much fun and so good, too. <laughs> So we'll, we have 50 images to go through, 50 entries, uh, more more images. Um, and the order we're going to cover them will be, we'll start off with critique feedback and oh. then do pictorial. And then we'll take a five minute break and then we'll do creative and journalism. And I assume that there are no new members here tonight. So I don't have to do my spiel about N4C and Wolfs and all that, right? <laughs> no, nobody uh, knew right now okay nope, nope. following the rules as they stand now before the rule committee hacks them to finish up <laughs> them to death. okay we'll start with then critique feedback at all levels and we have seven images okay my cursor in the right place <laughs> uh does oh there we go the Golden Temple. Okay. Um, for me, I find this image very striking, um, partially because of the color uh, and the gold that just jumps out at you, but it doesn't overwhelm me. But also because it's like funneling me down from a wider view to a tinier view. And there's a little black rectangle at the end of the view. And normally I would want something like a person or some kind of extra special thing there. But because there's so much greenery right near there, I think that for me that works just as it is. Um, I like the aspect ratio. Uh, I, I think it's technically well done and I really don't have any recommendations for change. And I'm wondering how it was done, but that's, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> it, it could be a real deal and it could be made up completely. Okay. And this is critique only. Um, you gonna so read this, the models or do I? This one is airborne. <laughs> Cottonwood Rodeo. Yeah. So this is, oh, uh, this is an older shot, but doesn't matter because rodeos have been going on forever and they still are. I think it, uh, if you've ever been to a rodeo, it's hard to catch um, the right moment without all the advertisement behind. So that's okay. that's kind of a given. You're not unless you're a professional rodeo shooter and you can get down in there um, where normal people can't. Um, you're going to get that the advertisement, but uh, and the person on the side, but it. it it doesn't bother me because I know that's how it works. And it, it, the maker has chosen an aperture does kind of blend it out a little bit, blur it out a little bit. It's not real sharp. But the on the other hand, the horse and the rider are very sharp. And it's a wonderful moment because the feet are, of the horse are all off the ground. Um, and the fringe on the rider's pants are flying. And he's got his hand up, you know, yelling the way he's supposed to at the rodeo. So I think this is um, a, a good shot. Uh, I don't know how I, I, I would uh, change it, given the nature of rodeos. Next. Some scenes fill your mind with awe at their sheer beauty. And some scenes, like this New Hampshire pond in the fall, also fill your soul with their peace and serenity. Well, a lovely title, and I think it really matches the scene. And I'm, I'm glad that the maker has chosen a panorama format. Um, you know, you can clearly see the autumn splendor. Uh, there are no hot spots. Everything's really sharp. Um, I love the way that the uh, green area in the foreground comes in and and then the on the lower part of the image and then the colors march across the top to the right. Uh, 
the there's glint of light on, on the water and the reflection is very pretty. So uh, yeah, there are branches in there, dead branches which give it a realistic view. I, I wouldn't take them out, but I think, um, I think it works well in, in pictorial and probably lots of categories. And I could see it on someone's wall next. Hi, I'm Al. Al Pekka. I like long, leisurely grazing in the grass. How about you? <laughs> well, a cutesy title. Um, uh, they make me laugh. Uh, I don't know how I enforce these. It depends on what category. I mean, you wouldn't put this in a nature uh, competition to <laughs> enforce you to get all upset. Um, but you're right in this alpaca space, and you can't. His eyes are kind of on the side, so but he does have glints in his eyes. But where my eye goes right to the teeth, boy, that guy really needs a dentist. Um, anyway, I think it's a, a very I've never seen an alpaca that looks exactly like this one, and the background's really nicely blurred out, and uh, it has a lot of impact. Um, and I like the aspect ratio because it focuses in on him <laughs> next. I assume it's a him. I think it's a him. Airborne Cottonwood Rodeo, May 2014. Okay. Well, it sounds like it's the same rodeo, probably the same maker, but again, a very good uh, shot in that you've picked an interesting moment where I believe, yes, the all four feet of the horse are off the ground. Um, the front feet are closer to the ground, but they're still not there. And the guy is in, in the, uh, the rider's in the typical rodeo uh, position. And you have, like the previous one, you have fringe on his chaps flying. You can see the dirt flying up um, in the back of uh, the horse. Um, the people in the background and the, the signs, the advertisements are blurred out a bit. So that helps. And, um, and basically the horse and the rider are, are nice and sharp. And I don't know whether the maker dodged his face, the, the rider's face, but um, it you can really see his face. And I think whatever you did processing it, it, it helps. Next. First light. Okay. I, I looked at this and I thought, what is this? <laughs> It's it, it's kind of scary to me. I mean, I, it's all from the title. It's all about the light, but I keep looking at this critter, and it looks like this critter has a horn, and and I don't know whether it's got ears or whatever. It has a lot of interest because I can't figure what it is out. What it is, and the colors are kind of ominous. The, the darks, and then the kind of icky green color it, it um it's kind of a nice monster shot so uh i don't know where it would fit maybe in creative um uh but uh again i think as far as changing it it, it would depend on where you put it in put it maybe in pictorial might be a little too ominous for pictorial but okay next <laughs> Dia de los Muertos, traditional family gathering in the cemetery of a small silver mine mountain town of Alamos in Mexico. Okay. Um, well, this is, um, this clearly would fit in, say, a journalist category, journalism, because this happens regularly in many places in Mexico. And of course, um, we celebrate it often in California in different places, in different ways. But the cemeteries in Mexico are different looking than some of our cemeteries. And you, this is at night. They do a lot of this at night. And, and that helps because you, uh, the maker has picked um, uh, an aperture that, uh, and uh, an ISO that allows the candles to show off without being too bright. And yet you can see, see that it's kind of dark. Um, and you have all the musicians there in the background. 
But what for me, what really makes this image is this little old lady <laughs> hunched over with her cane. Uh, I, if she weren't there, it would be, I wouldn't have a resting spot and the main, she's the main star of, of this image. So don't really have any suggestions. The left-hand corner is nicely darkened out because I'm sure it was probably a, a, a slab of white marble or something. Okay, next. Pictorial, basic five images. Taking it all in. Okay, um, a, a lovely uh, landscape shot done realistically. Uh, beautiful, natural looking colors in the greens. Um, good sky, you can see a little color yellows and a little oranges in the sky. Uh, so it's either a sunrise or a sunset, but not the exact peak moment, but that's fine. And for me, um, the way the branch of this tree arches over the person and sitting on the bench and the bike, that really makes it. It's, it's a wonderful framing element. Um, and for me, the star, even though the landscape is so beautiful, you have the focus point of the rider and his bike. So it's, it's a really good story and a nice realistically portrayed uh, image. <laughs> and I think it's beyond basic, actually. In fact, all the basics seem to be not basic compared to <laughs> other, <laughs> other clubs' basic, just so you know. <laughs> Weathered. Weathered. Well, what an attractively banged up uh, tower. And it's kind of a, a double entendre on the word because the tower is really weathered and the background sky is very ominous with weather. Um, it's nice that <clears throat> there's a nice, happy yellow foreground of uh, plants. It looks like it's a little tilted. Excuse me, guys. The tower could be popped up on the left edge a bit. Um, I would also try a variation with a little less sky. I don't mind all that sky. It's very dramatic, but a lot of times I try variations and see which I like best. Next. Last light adds a touch of magic to the rocky northern California coast. I can really feel the warmth of this last light. It, it just beautifully kisses the uh, earth on the lower left corner and then follows the rocks around. <clears throat> Everything is pretty sharp. No burnt out spots in the sky or the water for that matter. And there is definition even in the dark rocks. So um, I don't have any uh, other suggestions to change this, I, any variations I can think of. Next. Where's Waldo? Well, I, as you can see, a very busy uh, image, and I really did look for Waldo, thinking, you know, I mean, somebody might put a little Waldo in there, but I didn't find him, uh, so it's it's kind of cute. Um, but my eye, because it is so busy, I had no place for it to rest. I just kind of roam around all the branches. So I think you might want to put something in there that was a subject uh, that, to take away from the busyness and maybe a different color. You know, we always like a person in a red jacket. You know, so, and so that, that might help. Um, and if you're doing competitions, that's totally allowed in tutorial. <laughs> 
or creative, although creative, it's kind of realistic for creative. Um, but Victoria, you could do that. Yes. I love the striking colors and patterns of red-shouldered hawks. And when I am out birding, I listen for their cry, kia, 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 kia. <laughs> Good reading. Uh, I like the cry. <laughs> Um, but I also think this image is very well drawn. Uh, it's a wonderful uh, portrait of the bird in flight. Um, very realistic colors. Caught him with his mouth open, so I can totally hear that cry. I'm also enjoying the sky because it's graduated from uh, an, a sort of more intense cyan to a lighter blue as you move to the right um I, I you could crop in just on the bird but i like the fact that he has all that space to the right to fly into um, if it were nature story i might not need the space to the right and i might just talk about crop in and talk about the bird's wings and and his features but I think it works really well the way it is. Next. Sorry, I have a dog and she's coming in. Pictorial, <laughs> pictorial intermediate, three images. <laughs> okay, I'm back. From chaos. Oh, to sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Staring at the birds. From <laughs> chaos to order. It's like, oh my gosh. Ah. Um, well, this. I mean, the title says it all. It's complete chaos, and it is more orderly on the top, and there's so much going on. Now, I have no idea whether the maker uh, put layers and layers of birds on top of birds, which is totally okay in Victoria. Um, but very often these birds, um, like snow geese and so forth, they take off and there's just so many that you wonder how they don't bang into one another. So uh, I think this, I, I can't think of any way that I would do a variation. Maybe, all right, maybe I, I'd try maybe the only variation, there's um, some structures in the back, like it looks like there's a car <clears throat> in the, how do I explain this? on the right side, very blurred out. And then there's some kind of pole on the left side, very blurred out. It doesn't really bother me, but I, you know, I, I might try cloning those out um, and see if that was more effective. I don't think it would be all that different, to be honest. Okay, next. The Gin Maker's Jewel Box. Is it any wonder it's called Mother's Ruin? <laughs> well, somebody likes Jim. Um, <clears throat> I I have a bit of a problem. I, I really like the, the um, bottle on the far right because it's tack sharp and um, it's sort of a pinky color. And the colors... What's good is that the colors alternate. I have a pinky one, and then I have a sort of bluish one, and then another pinkish one, and then another bluish one. So I think the color palette works well. But the last two bottles on the left side are so out of focus, I think I would have tried a shot with a different aperture or maybe stand back farther so you can get a little more distance and have everything in focus um, because that literally it's half the overall image that's out of focus. Okay, next. Riding the dunes. Okay. <clears throat> well, the, the guy who's on his dune buggy was nice enough to have a red dune buggy, or maybe the maker painted it red, but it looks like it was a red dune buggy. And that helps um, bring your eye right into the middle uh, of the story. And the guy is there standing up in his black outfit with his black helmet. So you can see his position. He's 
he is up and writing. Um, nice that the foreground has some texture. It's very uh, rough. And the background is, is also full of texture and looks like there's been a lot of wheels over those dunes. So uh, it's, I can't think of any variations that I would try with this one. Next. Pictorial advanced 11 images. Salt and stone. Okay, when I, I previewed this, I, <clears throat> I, I thought salt, and then it took me a second. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the water is salty, and there's lots of stone. So I then I thought, oh, well, that's really a clever title. But beyond that, I, I, I find this image very pleasing. The slower shutter speed, the longer time the maker took to get that soft, silky water, it's for me, it's just the right amount of softness. Sometimes you can do it for too long and then it just becomes a blur, but this has just nice texture to it. And then the waves in the back are kind of misty and blurred out, which is also, I find it very appealing. Lots of good definition and texture in the rocks. Um, it's a good sky, the right amount of sky. It's <clears throat> I think, uh, no hot spots and has a lot of, uh, it's not real ominous, but it is a little bit stormy. And going back to the foreground, I think that all those rocks in the foreground um, and the tan color of the sand really offset the other color palette that's in the, in the rest of the image. Um, and also provides scale because those are tiny little pieces of rocks against the very large rocks. So I can't think of any variations that I would do on this image. Next. Balconies. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether this is a real building and it doesn't really matter if it is or isn't uh, in pictorial. I find it very, very interesting architecturally, and I'm really enjoying the color palette as well. Um, the diagonal lines, as you know, are always very dynamic. And yet the vertical lines help bring my eye from the bottom up to the top of the picture, and the diagonal lines sh shoot me across from the left to the right, uh, which is the way we read. And um, it's nice that it's sort of tan. Nothing's too hot or blown out and uh, tannish, peachy color. And then that contrast with the color palette of the sort of blue cyan colors. So, uh, and yeah, it almost cuts the thing into two big triangles, but I don't mind that at all because there's enough variation uh, to really hold my interest. So I can't think of any, uh, variations that I would suggest. Next. Baboon in the morning light. Okay. <clears throat> well, these guys don't always pose, but this is a very nicely captured baboon. You can see all the hair, everything's really sharp. Uh, there's a nice warmth in his eyes. You can, you can feel the warmth from the sun coming in from the left side as uh, he is in shadow on the right side. I I like the aspect ratio. I like seeing him way up close. Uh, I like seeing, seeing him quietly because these guys can open their mouths and they have big teeth and they can be very scary, but this is a very pleasing portrait. Um, the only thing I would suggest is maybe a little bit more dodging of his, of his eyes. Uh, just the hair um, and see if you like it a little better. Okay, next. Lady of La Triarg, West Fjords, Iceland, 2018. Well, the title really helps because I, you look at this and when, at first glance, it, it's like an abstract piece of art. But then when you really look, you can see little white birds 
flying around uh, in, the, in the front bottom and in the upper right side. Um, and then they're all in there brooding on cliffs and so forth. So uh, clearly this is not really a nature story for nature category because it's kind of too far away, unless you want to talk about the surface of the rocks themselves. Um, I'm wondering if it's really that they're really that green. I know things in springtime in a lot of countries can be very, very green, so green that it's almost not real, but this is probably real. Um, one thing is I have no one place that my eye really wants to go to as a focal point. And I'm not sure, other than cropping in more, how you do that. And I think that the maker really wanted to show the scale on how big these rocks are that, that birds uh, roost on. So I tried cropping, but I don't know whether that would make things any better or not. Next. A Touch of Green, Svalbard, 2022. Okay. Well, a nice, realistic uh, landscape. Um, the colors look real to me, and that's fine. You could have unrealistic ones, too, in, in the real boat. But I, I think these are realistic. If you look at this, is a, probably a glacier in, in the back. And it has that little cyan color to it, which glaciers typically have. And the rocks in the foreground look like they're full of icky, slimy green moss. Um, so it looks really real to me. And I like the contrast of the scale of these big rocks in the foreground and then the shapes, which are rounded, I guess, by water. And then the shapes of the jagged, uh, hills or mountains in the background. So I think it's a, a, a good swath of a uh, landscape. It, it's overcast and uh, and that's fine if that adds drama. So I can't think of any other variations to suggest for this one. Next. A honeybee coated with pollen. Okay, well, here's... Um, one that's in pictorial that actually could work in nature with a different title uh, because you've got a, a bee very close up and very sharp, very well done. Um, and you can see all the pollen and that's typical behavior. Um, and you can, everything's really, uh, all the parts of the flower are really well portrayed. And the petals have a lot of good definition. It's a little soft in the front, and that's fine, because that makes you feel like uh, you're at the right depth of field, and um, and the main focus is this bee, the gigantic eye. Um, so I think this is well done. I can't think of any variations, and it works well in pictorial and could also go in nature. Hanging by a thread. A clever idea. I don't know whether this leaf really was hanging or whether the maker created it that way, and it doesn't matter. Um, since the whole story is about the maker, I mean, the, uh, the leaf, and the leaf is the, very interesting with all kinds of defects on it, I think I would like a variation cropped in a little more on the leaf because there's so much sky and um, maybe that's the maker wanted to show how small the leaf was in this immense sky, but I really want to see the defects on the leaf as well. So I, I'd like to see a variation more tight, see if it's better. Next. Lady of the Night. Well, I did look this one up and that is the name of this flower. And it's very pretty flower, I think. Um, interesting, I like the fact that the, the flower is framed on the left side with the actual cactus 
uh, and spines coming out. Everything is really sharp, but so I think the depth of field works well here. Uh, I don't mind that the background is blacked out, you know, pretty much darkened out. There was probably a lot of busyness in the background, and this, for me, the darker black background makes the flower and the cac spiny cactus pop out more. Um, I think the only suggestion I have is that I might try dodging the center of the flower a little bit, or I would try going into exposure and just increasing the exposure, just the hair, give it just a tad more punch. Next. Red sky and morning. Okay. Well, clearly the main subject here is the red sky and it's, it's beautifully done. Uh, wonderful shapes and wonderful color palette. Uh, you can see where the uh, sun is coming up uh, at the uh, water line on the left side. It's nice that there is, there's actually, I guess, at least three, maybe more than three boats out there. But the one on the right side, you can really see that it's a boat. So that, that helps anchor my eye to something other than just the beautiful sky. Um, there's nice texture in the water as well, as well as colors. And of course, the pinks and the blues are wonderful complementary color schemes. So um, do I mind the lower right corner of the wall that's there? Mm, I don't think it's a big deal. I probably would try a variation with uh, cloning some water over that so that didn't uh, it wasn't there, but I don't know whether that's really, I don't think it's necessary. Next. Treasure in the Bark, Grove of the Old Ones, Occidental, California, 2020. A lot of texture in this image, as you can see. Um, and you've got all those browns and, and, and slight greens in the browns. Uh, and the fact that the, uh, I guess it's a fern, uh, jumps out as sort of green uh, is, it's a different element. And for me, that's definitely the, the main subject of, of this uh, image. Um, variations, well, the only thing I would try is maybe saturating the fern oh, just a little bit to make it a little bit more intense green. Not so much that it looks weird and out of place, but just a touch more. Um, okay, next. Between earth and sky. Okay, interesting concept. Uh, the title matches what I'm looking at. <clears throat> um, because you have a lot of sky, obviously, in, in this picture. And you have a fair amount of um, foreground. It looks like, uh, I don't know whether it's something edible or whatever, just weeds, golden color weeds, tannish color. Um, and in between, as you can see, is this little slip of a slice of light. And it looks like a mountain and some uh, other trees. Um, so as far as the variation, it is in between, but I would like, I would try a variation with less sky and go tighter in to see what, so I could see better what was in between. Um, maybe, maybe a panorama format horizontally instead of vertically just to compare. Next. Pictorial Masters, four images. A Popos, one of many in downtown San Francisco. Okay, well now I know what a Popos is. I guess I'd heard that word before, but it's not something I would commonly use. So this is a, um, I guess a private garden. Um, 
I, I think what makes this image for me is the woman in in the walking down the walkway. That gives me something to look at. Uh, and the diagonal lines of the walkway and the hedging around the walkway funnel me right in that direction. So I have to look at her. And then once my eye gets there, I I find that all the buildings in front of her have a lot of interesting uh, shapes and, and texture as well. Uh, I do find the coloring a little odd in the whole image. And um, the reason that seems odd to me is because it looks like a realistic image in terms of how it's been handled. And I would expect to see the colors a little less green, a little less rusty brown or blues. I, I don't know. It might be just... A, a tad oversaturated to be realistic, but it's there's not enough in it to tell me that it's a creative version. So I think I would play with the saturation as a variation. Next. Sage, the illuminated one. Well, I think this is a great title for what I'm looking at. Uh, it's it's almost spooky, <laughs> but the position of, of the uh, person's hands and um, the treatment or in the monochrome or whatever, uh, the way he's, he or she's lit uh, does give me the sense of sage, uh, sage person so knowledgeable. Um, I don't have any other, if this is the, what the makers are trying to come across with, I, I think the makers are successful. Um, another variation would make it be, just be color and it would be a straight shot and it probably, it wouldn't have the same impact, but it would be more of a portrait and color version. Next. King of the Savannah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I, I like that the maker has, um, I think it makes sense. The maker came in nice and tight uh, on, on this uh, male lion. Uh, you can tell because he has a, a mane. Um, uh, there's lots of light, uh, edge light, rim light all around uh, the animal, on, uh, both on the top and the left and the right side. So I'm Imagine that the light, the sun is obviously behind him. Um, he's a little on the orangey side for my taste. I think I would uh, bring the reds down a little bit. Um, I like the fact that I think it makes sense that the background, the aperture that was chosen has blurred out the background because he's the main subject. So I think that part works well. And I don't mind that there's extra image on the right side or um, of the background here because he's looking in that direction. Uh, okay, uh, variations, just the kinds of things I said about maybe toning the reds down. Next. Reflective juxtaposition, San Francisco Financial District. Well, this is a somewhat busy picture, but I find it, for, for my taste, I find it very compelling and I really am drawn to the crazy right side with all the unusual uh, reflections and shapes in there. I mean, it's full of, as you can see, diagonal lines going every which way. And I, I like the idea that the maker has chosen to show that next to a very realistic building on the left side. Um, what would the variations be? Well, one variation would be just, just show the crazy reflection side and not the right side. 
but again, it would, it, I think that would make it awfully, awfully busy where this way I have the contrast uh, uh, from the left part of the image to the right part of the image. Um, I'm, I guess the only other variation I can think of is I might try straightening it out a little bit, pulling the um, right edge down so that the edge of the realistic building on the left was more vertical rather than at a diagonal and and see what happens there. But even though uh, both in Photoshop and Lightroom, we've got tools to do lens correction, it doesn't always work really well, but I would try it just to see. Next. Creative, intermediate, four images. Unmute. Sorry, I fell asleep with the switch. We're back. We're creative. Intermediate or images. Hanging by a web. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> I was going to say same thing. Um, well, I, I find that I could totally be wrong with this and it doesn't really matter for creative, but this could be in camera motion. It looks like it, it was done in camera uh, with um, maybe looking at some light source. Uh, I think that's, that's one technique that works really well overall for the creative category. Um, what's appealing to me about this image is uh, the background is nicely subdued and going from the top to the bottom from almost black down to that sort of rusty burgundy color, um, which really makes this structure that, that is called web pop out. And that has some a lot of interesting um, color to it, especially the uh, lines of, of the structure on the right side have um, all kinds of greens and reds and oranges in it. So yeah. that's very appealing to me. Um, uh, once you look at it, though, it's not one that would hold your interest forever, but it does have, it's clear the focal point, and it does have enough interest to keep you going through the different legs of this object. Red. Next. The goddess. Okay. Well, uh, <clears throat> I don't know whether the maker caught this goddess in this place uh, for real and then turned it into a creative image. It doesn't really matter. I find, you know, creative is also not, not just manipulating and, uh, and doing layers and so forth, but also is creative seeing. So seeing, seeing this may have been uh, very creative. But clearly this is also manipulated in the upper right corner. You can see a round object, which is probably supposed to be the moon. I'm, I'm not totally sure. Um, but I find it intriguing. There's enough going on, even though it's busy, I find it intriguing because what's this person or, or goddess or statue doing on top of this a uh, box, which is behind a chain link fence, which <clears throat> is a pickup truck. Um, it's just uh, intriguing to me. I think my one suggestion would be if that uh, white circle is supposed to be a moon, if you could get a moon shot that had a little more definition and, and texture that really looked like a moon, I think that would be um, a good variation to try. Next. Electric. Okay. Um, well, I think the title does match uh, the image in that the I get the electricness from the bright pink of, of this flower 
and the fact that all these tendrils or petals or whatever they are um, look like they've been shot with electricity. And that's probably just the real look of this particular flower, but uh, it, it works well with the concept that the maker has here. Um, the background is nicely blurred out, um, although you can still see different edges of things. Um, and the, it's really just this one flower and this one spear that are sharp. Um, for other variations, I, I would try one that um, in the lower right-hand corner, there's quite a uh, large area of bright yellow. I would try subduing that uh, because that tends to pull my eye away from the flower, which is your main subject. And I might try intensifying the pink. Uh, of the flower to make it even more punchy and electric. Next. The winemaker's abstract. These barrel hoops are corroding, making more magic. Okay. Well, the maker has told me what I'm looking at, uh, which is nice to know, but it, it basically really is kind of an abstract painting in a way. Um, as you can see, there's tons of texture. Um, the color palette is, is uh, pretty interesting, you know, yellows and golds, and then some dark rusty colors. But there is some contrast with the blues in terms of complementary color schemes, the bluish grays and tan areas. Um, Again, it's it's one where my I don't know where my eye is going to go to rest um, because there's so much going on and it's so full of texture that I keep going around and looking at different parts, but I don't stop anywhere to see what the main subject is. So I'm not sure whether coming in tighter would help. Um, and I'm, let's see, I tried different variations of cropping to see if something popped out like the main subject or whatever. Next. Creative, advanced, seven images. S soft and serene. Okay. Um, well, I think the title matches what I'm looking at. Uh, very nicely. Uh, it is very painterly, um, very soft and nice that the bottom of the image starts out uh, one shade of blue and then it gets a little more intense and then turns to a different shade of blue in, in the sky. And I think it would be pretty boring if it weren't for that one tiny little I'm going to assume it's a rock, but it could be just some kind of defect um, in the mid area in the far right. That gives me something to look at besides the sereneness of all these different blues. So I, I think that's kind of important to keep that. Next. Just a little worried. Well, for me, here's a case of a maker looking at something that was something else and seeing something um, that's realistic, but it's put in a creative environment. Um, and I can definitely look at this and see that, that this is could be uh, a person just a little worried. So, and then besides which the colors are very pleasing, sort of metallic. And and, and uh, lots of tones in the uh, silver parts of blues, and then you have the warmer color palette in the bottom part of the image. So uh, I think it's clever. Next. Atmospheric river traffic. Okay. Well, there's this is a really busy image for me, as you can see. Um, it has a lot of texture. I can see that there are 
sort of smushed cars uh, due to the post processing. So there's that's where I get the traffic, and it looks like kind of water in the front. So I, that, that that gives me some clues. Um, I. I'm not sure where, I, I guess I'd have to say that my eye goes to the, the somewhat car in, in the left side as the main subject. Uh, and I, the question would be, do you think this treatment really helps this image or not? And it definitely turns it into a creative image. Okay, next. Reflection. Well, it's clearly black and white. Um, I, I tend to read the lower part as more interesting to me because there's more negative space, more white space around the black uh, area, uh, which is the reflection part of this image. And these must be some kind of plants. Um, Again, it's another image for me where I'm not sure what the focal point is, where my eye is going to go to and rest. Uh, so how would you fix that? I'm not sure other than to try and, well, here's one way. You could put a blob of color somewhere and then it wouldn't be all black and white and your eye would go to that particular color area. So just a, a thought, something to play around with. Next. Always a bridesmaid. Well, um, a nice, clearly creative. We know that the nice young ladies don't usually have dog heads. So, um, and this is really well done. Um, nice light um, on the person's body and the dogs blends very well in the neckline and, and the dog is looking up and there are nice catch lights in the dog's eyes. So uh, a very uh, interesting concept and well executed. Next. Celebration in the city. Okay, well, you can clearly see that there are buildings, which, you know, would be the city, and all kinds of strange colors coming out, which uh, probably was an, a sky with lots of clouds, but um, turned into cyan and green and purples. Um, it does make this image fall in the creative category, but I think I would try, I'm not sure how I tone that down because it's supposed to be a celebration. Um, it just, it, it comes across just slightly garish in my opinion. And um, I would try maybe some other colors or maybe I would do layers. And if you had any shots of fireworks, I put fireworks in the corner. Okay, next. Conflict in scale. Okay, <clears throat> well, this uh, clearly there is. I don't think that the fountain was quite that large or that person was that small. So that <clears throat> that is throwing it into a creative category. Um, what would I do differently? I, you've got you put it into uh, almost a non-real scenario just by the scale of the person and the fountain and your title, but in the upper left-hand corner, you have a very realistic shot of a building and a tree. So I don't. I might try a version where the very realistic building and tree are cropped out and just focus on the kind of surreal conflict and scale. See if you like that better cropped out or not. Mm -hmm. Next. Creative masters, two images. Where, Where the dunes meet the Pacific 
sunset over Namibia. Okay. Um, well, lots of interesting colors and textures here. Uh, and um, I, I'm enjoying the, the fact that the, the colors are sort of greenish and then whitish and then golden yellowish. That, that variation carries me from the bottom of the frame to the top. Or I can look the other way, because, uh, but I tend to go to the bright area, um, which is the white horizontal band, pretty much in the middle. Um, and if you look at it, and you can see lots of different bands going across, it is very much a banded horizontal image, but very abstracted. So I think it works. Um, can't think off the top of my head of any variations to talk. Next. A convergence of paths into another dimension. Okay, a clever title and an image that says to me the same thing. Um, lots of lines, but um, the dark shadowy lines in the bottom of the circle point in and then pull you right through this bunch of black and white striped pillars to the very back. So I, I have a lot of interest here. I can go from the front to the back and the colors are very electric. I, I wonder how you got these colors. They really pop. They, they don't look realistic in any way, shape and form. So um, I think this works quite well for creative. I can't think of any suggestions for change. Next. Journalism, intermediate, one image. Uh, I think this is a series of three. Yeah, Lake Placid, one of three. Nestled in the Adirondack Mountains, Lake Placid, New York was home to the 1932 and 1980 Winter Olympics. Lake Placid, two of three. The Olympic speed skating oval in the center of town is put to good use by locals and visitors. Lake pa Placid, three of three. The Olympic center houses three ice rinks, including this one, where the U.S. famously upset the USSR in 1980 in hockey. Okay. Well, um, it's a classic series, and it works well in journalism. Uh, the images are varied enough so that you, you're, a lot of times with series like in nature or in journalism, people have so much to say, they add extra images in their series just so they can talk more about what's going on. I don't feel that this is a sequence that does that. I think there's enough variation and enough information in the series of three to hold up. So I wouldn't change anything. Thanks. Journalism advanced two images. Relief, one of three tree planting nonprofits are springing up around the country. Petaluma's Relief envisions planting 10,000 trees to restore the canopy. Over 1,000 trees have been planted so far. Relief, two of three. Relief relies on donations, grants, and volunteers for labor. Volunteers meet at tree planting sites and given training on how to properly plant a tree. Then they go to digging. Three of three, trees are planted in parks, at schools, and other places in need of cooling trees. This planting took place at Arroyo Park in Petaluma. Okay. Um Again, another good journalism story. And one of the tests is where would these images be put and in, in what kind of a magazine or newspaper or online, whatever. So clearly the previous one I could see about um, Olympics uh, in some kind of a pub publication and definitely this one as well. The, the, each one of these images sh show and tell through the title uh, a good story and no, no two, if you eliminated one, you'd be changing, shortchanging your story. So I, I think 
this is the right amount of information and images. Next. <laughs> Devastation after the Kincaid fire in Northern Sonoma County. Only a chimney remained of this 1890s farmhouse that was destroyed on October 27th, 2019. Well, the image itself and the information in the title are matched very well. Um, I think the monochrome was a very interesting choice um, for this image because it really, in my opinion, really shows off the devastation. And um, and I really like the tip on how the tower is listening to the light. It's it's very interesting visually. And it's a sad story, and I think it's very well captured. So I, I definitely think this could be in some kind of article talking about the Kincaid fire or fires and devastation in general. Next. Journalism, masters, four images. The Bon River floods, Hoi An, Vietnam, due to heavy rain, November 14, 2023. Okay. Well, um, one of four. There's another image where the title and the what I see in the image match very well. Um, it's a sad story, but it's a very attractive picture uh, and well done. You know, you can see all the lights and the people and the reflections on the water, which make it visually very appealing. And yet you're looking at a really sad story and it's a very current story just uh, in November of last year. So uh, I think this works well in journalism. Uh, I could see it in some kind of article uh, published around about floods in general or even about Vietnam. And it's, it's just how it can often flood there. Next. Hamar, one of four, coming of age ceremony by Ethiopian Hamar tribe involves a ritual, horrific to most Westerners. The male initiate initiates female relatives ask to be whipped, proof of their love and devotion. Two of four, the women are voluntarily whipped with sticks they cut themselves from the forest. Designated whippers are friends of the male being initiated, recent initiates themselves. Three of four, the ceremony continues for hours. They repeatedly cut new sticks and get in line to ask for another whipping. Four of four, old scars are proof of their love for their male relatives and are displayed proudly. All day, the women dance, yell, blow horns, and laugh. Bells on their skirts add to the cacophony. Well, definitely uh, uh, a good journalism series. Uh, a lot of information provided in the titles with each image. Um, not a practice that we would like to participate in in the Western world, but I think on this particular image, the second image, it is different enough to be included in the series of four. But my one concern is that the woman, oop, go back to that one too. The woman, it seems to be blowing some kind of horn. And yet in the information that's given in the title of this particular image, it makes no reference to that. So I think, um, I would have tweaked this title a little bit to uh, identify what she's doing with that horn in her mouth and how that is part of the overall ceremony or ritual. Next. Both of those images show very the, the scars that these people have and how they're willing to go through this. Next. The Pickleball for All Fall Classic was three days of nonstop action on 12 closely spaced courts last October. 
The Spring Classic will be four days starting April 11th, 2024, Finley Center, Santa Rosa, California. Okay, um, a lot of good information, a, a, a good shot taken at you know the time where you've got you've got balls in the air and you've got guys in the background and interesting positions and guys in the front ready to whack that ball. I so I think the image uh, captures um, that kind of event very well. And as you can see from the title, it's a very current image. So um, I could clearly see this in some kind of um, a publication about this pickleball events. Next. Liquid gold, one of two. Winter rains began to replenish Lake Sonoma. Elevation 396 feet, January 5th, 2023. Two of two, Lake Sonoma at shortage storage capacity, April 3rd, 2024, 459 feet. Well, both images have a lot of pictorial quality, especially this one with the rainbow. But for journalism, I think they also work very well. And I really commend the maker on taking this shot in, in 2023 and then a very similar shot in in 2024, which very nicely shows how the water has uh, definitely appeared here in the lake. So I, I can totally see this in a story about this lake or about how uh, and a publication about weather and, and, um, and rain and, and how much difference one year to the other makes in terms of rainstorms and filling our lakes and reservoirs. So I think this works well in journalism. Next. Okay, that's it. That's it. Okay. I'll stop sharing. We'll take another five minute break okay. and then we'll come back with the uh, winners. Pictorial basic four images, honorable mention. Dan M. Key. Yeah. Don't think, don't think he's here tonight. No. Oh, yeah, very nice. Yeah. Wonder where he took that. It's on Petaluma Hill Road. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like his play on words too, like Jane did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Third place. Nice. Martin. The the M key bill. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, really. Yeah. I like the light, evening light, or morning, whatever. <laughs> what beach, I wonder morning. what beach this is at then. Yeah. Congratulations to Martin. Second place. Mm, also Martin. Martin again. <laughs> Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kia. <laughs> Congratulations to Martin. First place. Mm. Dan. Yeah, that's really that's, nice. That's a nice, very nice frame yeah. on that yeah. color. Mm -hmm. I wonder what mark it is. I'm guessing Helen Putnam in, in Petaluma. Hmm. Oh, okay. Hmm. Could be wrong. Mm, I was, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful trees there. Oh, gorgeous. Congratulations to Dan. Pictorial Intermediate, two images, second place. Hmm. Amy. Yeah. Mm, cool. It's fun. Yeah. Be nice to know where those dunes were. <laughs> Congratulations to Amy. Monica. First place, Mark. Oh, yeah. Oh, really cool. This, yeah, it's cool. This is stunning. Congratulations to Mark. Wow. 
pictorial advance, seven images, honorable mention. Hmm. Ed. Where's Svalbard? Iceland? 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 Okay. It's my guess. Looks like it. <laughs> Yeah. No, it's yeah. not. It's uh, Nor Norway, I think. Norway? Norway? Okay. okay. Svalbard. Yeah. Congratulations to Very Ed. Nice. Honorable mention. Mm -hmm. Phil. Oh, Phil. That's a great image. Phil's here. Uh, really sharp. Uh, last year at the meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, Phil. Oh. Very nice. Very nice. Some bees and blooms. Yeah. Cool. I, I I'd like to say something about what Jane said about it being allowed in uh uh nature. In our club, we consider honeybees to be a feral domesticated. Um, they're they were brought into the United States for making honey, and most bees that you honeybees you see are part of a uh a domesticated you know, living in, in that. So we, we, we do not allow, I'm, I'm only saying this so that anyone who would look and say, oh, well, honeybee, I can put that in mm. nature. Right. Good. Yeah. There's, there's, there are lots of books written about honeybees actually. And, and not all of them are, um, you know, by beekeepers there, are, there are wild bees and there are various strains of these uh, Apis mellifera, different ones. It's not just one type. So it's The Mind of the Bee is a really cool book. Several others to say. Mm -hmm. Cool. And, and we, we distinguish between Apis mellifera and all the other wild bees that are allowed. Hmm. It's oh. just the honeybee. It's just the honeybee. The honeybee mm. is the only one. That's... That we don't allow in nature. That's interesting. Thanks, Nancy, for uh, cluing me in, too, before. <laughs> Nice image, Bill. And it's a wonderful yeah. image. And I'm really delighted that yeah, you it's stunning. have it. Congratulations. Honorable mention. Greg. Beautiful. That's lovely. Gorgeous. Beautiful. This is, is uh, <clears throat> this is a cactus that's right outside our front door. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> oh my and, God. and we that's planted nice. it. We planted it in, in 2020, and it was about four feet tall. And last summer, when I took this photo, it was almost nine feet tall. Wow. So I had to get up on a stepladder and put my tripod at a <laughs> tallest, tallest um, setting I could get. And the flowers, they only bloom at night. Oh. Really? So, Wow. It's hard to get a photo at night unless you go out and do light painting or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I took this one in the morning. And the thing, thing about these flowers is when the sun hits them, they close up. Hmm. Uh -huh. and, and so there's like a two hour um, window in the morning when you can photograph them with natural light. Nice. So I really had to play around with my settings to get, catch this and actually not have the petals blown out. Mm -hmm. Do they have a nice scent? But, no, they they don't have any scent that I can tell. But the bees, the bees are all over them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I entered a photo last year in Nature with identifying the bees as pollinators. But the subject was pollination and it passed the nature criteria. So even when I use bees, I could you just don't focus you do you just don't focus the attention on the bees. Um, Steve made a really good recommendation. <laughs> don't, don't even mention bees in your title. But um, <laughs> pollinators, because they are pollinated by moths and mm -hmm. and also bats. Oh. Wow. Huh. Cool. Anyway. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Honorable mention. Oh, Linda. That is uh, taken in the sunrise in the Baja. In wow. the yeah. Three little boats. 
I don't know how to clone water onto the left. <laughs> it's a good idea. Beautiful colors. Really, yeah. really nice shot. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Congratulations. Third place, mm. Cindy. She's really pretty light. Congratulations to Cindy. Second place. Hey. Richard. <laughs> this is a real building. It's the um oh I had it a minute ago. What hotel, Steve? The Hyatt Regency. Hyatt Regency. Oh, I was gonna say, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's part of it was part of the field trip that we took oh. on the walk with Steve through San Francisco. The Hyatt Regency. Very special field trip. Really, really great. Very Thank you. nice. Bill Soto. Bill's photo and my photo and Tricia, uh, all from the field trip. So it was very <laughs> productive field trip. Yeah. Yep. I bet none of these, if you all took the building, it wouldn't look like this. It would be your signature. Yep. Be different for every one of us. This one looks so organic. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Really cool. It's really sharp. I think the blue up there really makes it. For the contrast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the yellow. Yeah. Blue and the yellow. Yeah. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Congratulations. First place. Oh. Linda. Mm -hmm. Linda. That's yeah. mine. Well, that was that was taken in the uh, workshop that I was just at in uh, Big Sur. Oh. Wow. And in mm -hmm. the front that look like little rocks, those are those Vela Velas oh. that are related to the uh, jellyfish oh they're wow. everywhere they were oh. just this the huh. whole along the uh, um, western coast you know oregon all the way down they're loaded with these things because the water is warming up right. so much mm -hmm. that they're coming in closer to shore and mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, a beautiful the garapata beach oh garapata yeah garapata. yeah yeah so, that's a great place to shoot. that was that was really fun yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Congratulations. Pictorial Masters, three images, third place. Tamara. Goes. Yay. Oops. I'm still here, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh this was taken in the Masamora, actually, Jane. Oh uh, during migration last year. Oh, wow. Was, wow. I've been practicing doing more backlighting and things and uh, oh. just for fun. Yeah. If you, well, you got real close. How close were you? <laughs> oh, well, they sit right next to you. That uh, that was a probably a 24 to 70. It was sitting right next to me. Oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> yeah. They'll, yeah. They'll go around your vehicles and under your vehicles or cheetahs especially. Leopards will go right under your car. If you're in the way, they just go right around you, right under you. Lions tend to walk around because they're too big to go under. But <laughs> you <laughs> must be used to that by now. Yes, we yeah. go. We go all the time. So, in fact, last weekend we were uh, somewhere petting where there were some orphaned, uh, orphaned rhino babies, oh, and no we got to pet, take them for a walk. Oh. So they like to be scratched. Oh, they give you like a brush and you scratch oh. them because they love to get scratched so much. That was pretty <laughs> wild. Yeah, that's not something you normally get to do. That was pretty crazy. Do the babies have horns? Yeah, they're 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 starting. These guys were only, I forget, five and six months old. So their horns were pretty small. Tamara, is that the color that it actually is? It's the that bright orange? It was pretty close because it was it was, you know, 6 a.m. backlit. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, I did, I, I, somebody told me a tip um, last year, actually on this trip, that they shoot morning and evening, um, even though, of course, you're shooting Ross, you can change it, but that they shoot with warmer, like they, even if it's not, they shoot it cloudy or whatever, like a 7,000 Kelvin uh -huh. or whatever, to help you get better, better backlit colors. So that's what I was trying here. It wasn't mm -hmm. that I was that wild about the you know, the lion, but uh, just trying to do a uh, really cool. backlit 
flow and you know it, it doesn't last long and then it's gone and it doesn't work anymore with yeah that <laughs> very nice thank you great congratulations second place <laughs> steve <laughs> cool it's really cool well, i'm wondering if it's infrared very it, good it looks like it, it huh like it, that it? reflection yeah. off of water or something like a pool or yeah, something like water. that. Yeah. Sweet. Or she's got leprosy. <laughs> <laughs> or decoration or veins. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah, it's a really neat image. I like it too. Congratulations to Steve. First place. All right. Bill. Nice. Thank yeah. You. yeah. Thank cool. You. Nice job. Well, thanks to Steve for taking us in these really interesting places where we get images like this. But and yeah, guess, more coming. Yeah, I was, uh, interesting place. Yeah, but seeing that—that's what's so cool. Mm -hmm. Well, I see all these faces that are grinning and smiling <laughs> on one side, <laughs> and then very conservative on the left. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Contrast. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Creative Intermediate, two images, second place. Mark. Fun. Congratulations to Mark. First place. Mm -hmm. Amy. Nice. Nice. It looks like Bliss Dancer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Congratulations to Amy. Creative Advanced, four images, honorable mention. Mm. Phil. Yeah. Well, this is actually a fountain in the Huntington Gardens in Southern California. And the girl was the same uh, fire dancer I put in several other images, I think, from. <laughs> over the last oh, right. uh, cool. Nice. cool very creative I like the splash back <laughs> congratulations third place mm -hmm. Linda oh yeah this this was at uh, Big Sur last week too and and uh, that was at the car Carmel River State Park, and we were just mm. trying long exposures, and there were all these little rocks, you know, out there, and it, it was so much fun. It was raining <laughs> while I was taking this, so yeah, it was the last our last night. So. Did you use a tripod? Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. just yeah, yeah, so level. Yeah, fifteen <laughs> seconds. Wow. Yeah, is that what it was? Oh yeah. Yeah. F25. I probably didn't need F25. Well, no, I wanted to make it long. So mm -hmm. That's why. Thank Makes you. Sense. That's very, very cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Second place. Mm -hmm. For sure. I knew that was your Lovely. Yeah, cool. <laughs> um, also Good San eye. Francisco. Always <laughs> <laughs> wrong. I, I just, I see stuff like this all the time. It's like Sort of, I feel like it's part of my signature, and I, yeah. I can't help it. I just love it. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations, first place. <laughs> Sherry knew there that was yours, Sherry. Oh yeah. God. dog heads on uh, human bodies. Uh -huh. Oh, I can't help myself. <clears throat> Don't. Um, don't help yourself. Oh. It's wonderful. It's really it's cool. Great. Absolutely amazing. Oh, uh, <laughs> thank you. I I just had a lot of fun. It's uh, my friend's daughter. Um, I did photos of her, and at one of the, I had two lights, and one of them didn't go off, and that's why she's really dark in the back of the body. And I thought I'm going to use that one day, so I'm glad <laughs> I kept it. <laughs> you share it with her. And it's my neighbor's dog. I haven't shared it with her yet. No. That's great. Really great. Thank you. Oh, you have to it. tell us how she reacts. Yeah. <laughs> you can sell these, Cherry. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, it, they're, just, they're just fun. They're just fun to do. And um, 
um, you know, the detail is in getting some of the little hairs over the neckline and yeah. some of them tucked into the neckline and things. So it's, it, they're just fun to do. It could be a wedding card, you know. Portfolio. <laughs> you can make a book. I don't want to do that many of them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I love the title, too. <laughs> Always surprise me. Great image. Congratulations. Uh, Creative Masters, two images, second place, Tamara. So cool. It's just stunning. How did you do this? I didn't do much of anything. I just kind of heightened the colors and touched it. It's from a helicopter right on the coast. Wow. Oh, the ocean, that's the cool. sand dunes in Namibia come right down to the ocean like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. That's cool. No, so I was just kind of playing around with where if I couldn't decide whether to crop out the the sand on the top and just do the colors of the water. So I just heightened all the colors a little bit, but yeah, it was really interesting. Cool. That's something That's you big. really want on your wall. You know? Yeah. 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 Big. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations. First place. Oh. Me. Me. <laughs> and once awesome. again uh bill trisha you may recognize this oh, this yeah. is the third floor plaza of yes. the golden gateway apartments which have townhouses all around them and pathways weaving through the townhouses this is another popos uh privately owned public open space and when you look at the columns with the shadows, there are wooden pergola structures um, <laughs> overhead, and those are casting shadows on these vertical posts. Now, and that's the shadow you see, uh, the dark pointing going up there. Well, where wow. it's pointing up, um, I mirrored the left side to the right side, but it's off center to the right. Then I used a, um, a rippling lens filter. And so the colors that are in the central part are accurately reflected in those two rings going around the edge. Wow. Really what did you call it? A rippling center filter? Hmm. It's a, a rippling lens. A lens filter. Yeah. Uh, uh, different types of lenses. Um, it won't show the center, but it will show uh, as though like a water ripple lens. Ima Gorgeous. Imagine rippling on the water. Water is optical. If you cast light through the ripples, it's like mm -hmm. a lens. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful nice job. <laughs> Thank you. Moving on. Journalism, intermediate, one image. Amy. Amy. Nice. Must have been fun. The whole town can be that. Very nice to be done. Yeah. Upset Congratulations to Amy. Mm -hmm. Journalism advanced, two images, second place. Mm -hmm. Sherry. Sherry. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, this is a nonprofit that's near and dear to my heart. Both my husband and I volunteer. So Good. it was yeah. fun nice to share it with I'm you photographing. all. Wow. Thank you. Does this happen every year or is it um, once or how often? Um, well, they plant during tree planting season. So um, late fall, early, you know, they actually have one uh, Saturday if anyone's interested. But um, usually it's when the trees are dormant is when they're planting. Good idea. <laughs> it's great. Congratulations. Thank you. First place, Pat. Mm. Thank you. This is what was left of our, our farmhouse. After oh, wow. Fire. oh, Pat. Wow. <laughs> Up wow. close and personal. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Wow. 
It's a beautiful old place, but it's gone. 1890s farmhouse. Wow, that's very sad. Yeah, that's history gone up in the smoke. That was so devastating. Uh, it took over a century before the fires reached it. Oh, well, mm -hmm. yeah, that was nice at last. Yeah. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Journalism Masters, four images, honorable mention. No, oh, thank you. Bill. <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to capture how chaotic covering this event is. You're inside a very enclosed area, 12 courts, very closely spaced, and balls going everywhere. <laughs> it's just, Wear just, goggles and a helmet. <laughs> Stay, stay loose. <laughs> <laughs> nice ball capture, great. Yeah, yeah. wow. Thank One you. ten so thousand of a second. Player? Hmm. Are you a pickleball player? No, I'm just the photographer. <laughs> <laughs> a saber. Well, maybe not. Well, here, here, there's just, just a. It's a curious fact. Here, nobody's heard of pickleball. In fact, most of the world, nobody's heard of pickleball, except in the U.S. and like maybe Canada. There's another sport, I'm a big racket sport person, called paddle tennis. Yeah. It's taking over the world. Like in one year, they've built 50 courts in Nairobi. Oh like you go to Dubai, on the rooftops of everything. Spain, wow. it's everywhere. And nobody's heard of pickleball. They have one pickleball court they just opened here. <laughs> Everybody asked me about it. You're American. Do you know anything about this game? <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Third place. Mm. Yeah. Jack. Oh. I knew it. He lives up there. Yep. That's his uh, that's his backyard. Oh wow. <laughs> My goodness. His vineyard. <laughs> yep. Oh wow. Wow. Nice that he documented this. Yeah, quite a difference. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. Wow. Congratulations to Jack. Second place. Mm. Tomorrow. Yeah, uh, holy so stunning. Yeah, crazy. Well, the mm -hmm. reason I got up today was because of this. Because I didn't. I have a lot of images. I was at this event for like five hours, and I wanted to put it in, but I didn't want to be too graphic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a it's a pretty amazing mm -hmm. event, and when you when you watch it. They don't care that you're there. Why don't oh. you stay out of their way? Um, mm. It's really a party when you're watching it because they're all blowing these horns and there's so many bells on their skirts and they're dancing and they're running around and it's this huge party. I was there in January. And then when I came home and I was looking through some of these images, I actually had to go back and watch some of my phone images of how much fun they were having because it was so horrific. Yeah, yeah. it I is. Myself, Look at those stars you know, on their back. Themselves. I know the scars oh. are terrible. <gasps> I, then, I don't think I'd get married. <laughs> I got a question. Um, do the younger kids, the younger women and men, do they feel differently about this doing this ceremony? The reason I ask is because my husband and I were in um, Thailand in September and we went to visit the long neck women that have mm -hmm. the oh yeah. Yeah. yeah like yeah. Myanmar and yeah. and not all of the, the kids are forced to wear the you know the golden rings. Yeah. The younger people make up their own minds sometimes. Mm. Yeah and unfortunately with tourism especially I know with the, the ring a lot of the ring tribes um, they do it, some of them still do it because of the tourism, because they can't make money. Right. I, in Myanmar, I know that was true, and in Thailand, I think, too. Mm. Um, well, this particular tribe, everybody's, this, everybody was still participating. Um, <laughs> some of the other, a lot of the other tribes around East Africa um, and this whole valley, they're not doing a lot of that anymore. Like the the tribes with the big lip plates that you see pictures of, they're not very far from these people. Yeah. Uh, I was at that some villages of those people too. And most of the younger women are not doing that anymore. Uh, part of it, I think, is economic too, because um, like in this valley, they're putting in huge sugarcane 
factories. So there, when there's when you don't need, you don't have to do it culturally soon. Well, these people will be doing this for a long time, I think. But some of the tribes, but uh, once they have other options and they maybe they get more educated and they can get jobs, they kind of decide that some of this scarification is not for them. Like it's actually illegal in Kenya. You can't do the scarification on your the faces. They do rings. You'll see if you come, Jane, in the Maasai Mara. Ah. A lot of the Maasai have little kind of fingerprint size scars on their cheeks. Okay. It's been illegal for quite a while, but you still see kids, you know, six, eight that have it. So people still do uh -huh. it. Um, this particular, this hammer tribe here, I mean, they're very Western. I, I think I put one of the pictures in where she has a cell phone in her hand. They follow football, soccer, you know, they know all about Manchester United and everything. But uh, they choose, like a lot of the tribes, they choose to keep their traditions. Uh -huh. And um, these people, actually, the guy that we have an Ethiopian guide we've used quite a few times, and he was one of our three, we had the three guides to get to places like this. Um, he said he had a big YouTuber there, American YouTuber, a couple of last year, I think it was, who really wanted to see one of these ceremonies. And there wasn't one, you know, it has to, it has to be happening. You can't say, I want to see one. That's right. And hmm. the guy kept saying, I'll pay, I'll pay. He got up to $10,000 oh with God. his one Hi. village. So, Tell anybody I'll pay them ten thousand dollars if they'll do this, and they all turned it down. I mean, it's it's Good. not something they do for tourists. It's their own their, their own, own things. beliefs and, and rituals. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing you were able to see it. Really, we did get lucky because you know you go and you hope. We were in this valley for about a week, I guess, and there's probably twenty tribes in this valley of all different national, all different types that do all different things, very different, but. You go hoping that you can see, and this is not, I didn't even know about the whipping part. The bull jumping part is what's famous. And oh. that's, that follows all of this whipping. That's at the end. I'll put some pictures of that. <laughs> in some okay. Good. Oh, that'll be that's interesting. Bull yeah, jumping. Then you get there and you're like, whoa, what is all this part? And then the bull jumping takes 10 minutes. And then you can stay for the big roasts at the end if you want. It goes on, I guess, for a couple of days. But I mean, we were two hours drive on no roads, driving through dirt from this little tiny town where there was a little tiny hotel. So we had to get back before dark, needless to say. So we couldn't stay for the. Wow. But if some people get lucky in one of these, this, there's like 50,000 of the hammer. Some people that I know have been and say, oh, well, if you're lucky and they do a bull jumping 20 minutes outside of the town, stay for dinner, stay for the whole night, you know, stay for the party and you can find your way home. But we would not have found our way out if we had. <laughs> Love your okay. images. Wow. They're great. Yeah. Congratulations. First place. Mm. Jack. Jack. Yeah, this is cool. Great shot. It's gorgeous. Apple iPhone. Mm. iPhone. Wow. Yeah, mm. that's beautiful. Wow. Mm. Wow. Congratulations to Jack. Mm. And image of the night, best of show. Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, I have to share with her. <laughs> oh, I'm, and I'm just... for Sherry, this is her third best of show this year. Yes. Wow. Have they all been like, like this with the animal heads and stuff? Or... <laughs> I beg two. your pardon? Have two of them been the animal heads? Oh, uh, the other animal head was last year's. Oh, that was the last year. Yeah, yeah. But so yeah, he got he got <laughs> something. Yeah, I've only done, this is only the second one. I mean, I've done a few more, but they weren't, they weren't, uh, yeah, they were kind of rejects. So thank you. I'm really <laughs> flattered. Thank you so much. Well done. Oh, congratulations. Well done. Well deserved. Well deserved. <laughs> Good yeah. job, Jane. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, yeah, Jane. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, guys. Jane, so much. Jane, for everything. Great. Judging Fun great stuff, comments. Guys. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And Linda. Bye-bye. Tomorrow, great Bye -bye. to see you. Bye. Good job yeah. reading, Linda. Well, thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Linda, take great a job reading. Yes. <laughs> I didn't too many times. <laughs> no, it sounded great. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.